On my daily radio show on Sirius XM's POTUS channel, whenever I defend Israel in any way, particularly as to their intentions, that they're not trying to kill civilians, when I point out that Palestinian civilian deaths only hurt Israel's cause, I get people calling in citing comments made by Israel's leaders, which suggest that they have encouraged some form of genocide. My response was often, well, it's just, you know, one person making a comment in passing. That shouldn't reflect the idea that the whole government's doing that. But now we're learning that some of those most inflammatory comments weren't even made at all. Even though those comments have also been amplified by the New York Times, NPR, BBC, among many others. Many times, by the way. One of the worst of the comments supposedly came from Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant addressing some of his soldiers at the border of Gaza three days after the October 7th massacre. Now, here's a clip from a BBC interview last week with the British Defence Secretary. Listen to the host's question. There have ministers who've said uh, similar things or spoken in similar ways. The Defence Minister said, we will eliminate everything in relation to Gaza. Using that same speech by the Israeli Defence Minister, here's NPR's Leila Fadil. I'm going to read you some of the things that have been cited to us as examples of intent. Several from the defense minister. We are fighting human animals. Gaza won't return to what it was before. We will eliminate everything. But here's the problem. These media personalities apparently left out a key word when translating the defense minister's speech. Here it is in Hebrew. <laughs> He was talking about eliminating Hamas. Not everyone in Gaza. When he referred to the animals, he was talking about Hamas. Not about everyone in Gaza. A journalist for The Atlantic named Yair Rosenberg, a Hebrew speaker, has an article out entitled, What Did Top Israeli War Officials Really Say About Gaza? Where he points out the mistakes that the media has made and then repeated. And the guest, by the way, at the NPR interview had was a guy named David Crane. He's on the left here. He's an expert on genocide, having searched, served as the chief prosecutor for the UN in indicting the president of Liberia for war crimes in Sierra Leone. Now, even with the faulty quote presented to him of the Israeli defense minister's words, Crane still came to the conclusion that Israel's actions do not constitute genocide despite some prodding by the host. When you have a genocide, you have to really have someone who is specifically can actually carry out the genocide as well. And statements by members of the Knesset or members of Congress or whomever... The defense minister. ...who say these things, you know, that's not intent. Again, that's not what the defense minister said. But he went on to point out that Hamas has made it clear that they do have the intent. By the way, this isn't the only example. The New York Times, in a January 5th editorial, argued that Benjamin Netanyahu's ambitions are to displace Gaza's population. Quote, Netanyahu said this week that the government is considering a scenario of surrender and deportation of residents of the Gaza Strip. That would be bad, right? Times journalist Michelle Goldberg used as her source the translated English version of the speech from the blog of Israel's progressive Haaretz. But again, something was very lost in the translation. In his original Hebrew speech, Netanyahu said he was open to the surrender and deportation of Hamas's leadership, not residents, in exchange for hostages and an end to the war proposal that was rejected by Hamas. Haaretz has since corrected the error, but no acknowledgement of it from the New York Times. Joining us now is Ron Campias. Uh, he is the Washington bureau chief for the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. Previously worked as a correspondent in Jerusalem for the Associated Press and at the Jerusalem Post in Israel. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So are these mistakes just oversights? It just seems like no one is rushing to correct them. I think the mistakes come out of, uh, you know, the rush to just get the story out. The, uh, uh, the, the next clickable thing, which is unfortunately something that, uh, you know, social media, the immediacy of the Internet has kind of eroded uh, uh, good journalism. I mean, nobody wants to wait to actually figure out the uh, uh, the truth anymore, or, to, or to, to put things fully in their in their context. So it it comes out. You have, as you pointed out, the distortion of what uh, Yoav Gallant said, where he was actually referring to uh, Hamas, 
and not all the residents of Gaza. And it's just, it becomes so tempting, uh, especially in a context where there are people who are accusing in Israel of genocide to say, oh, wait a second, maybe there's a substantiation here. And, uh, and, then the, uh, and then the wider context gets lost. But there's also no rush to correct. I mean, these are, these are big differences, right? This is a big story. This is a big deal that has enormous impact. And I would think that major news operations like the New York Times, like NPR, like BBC, when they learn, oh my goodness, we completely misinterpreted this, would rush to correct it, but they're not. Yeah, that's right. It's, a, it's unfortunately, uh, you know, a phenomenon. I think of the uh, of the last decade or so of uh, just not apologizing, not correcting. I mean, I remember, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you'd open up the second. If you, if you were a little bit of a vulture like myself, you'd open up the second page of the Washington Post or the New York Times, and you'd look for the corrections. But uh, you, because you wanted to make fun of them a little bit. But on the other hand, it, that actually served to bolster the credibility of the newspaper. They were willing to put it out there that they had made a mistake, that they were. Correcting. And, you know, in this particular case, uh, I think today the New York Times actually put out a correction and Bloomberg didn't, but a lot of the other publications have, uh, have yet to do so. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.